we, after much consideration, are going to go over a game. We are going to over go over a game that feature. Let's see. I'll put the names in properly. Uh, you versus you. All right. You are this. You are that. There we go. So, no, we are not going over one of Kaiji's games. So, so sorry. We are going to go over one of Yiching Ho's games. Uh, I, hmm, let's see. If I don't say anything, how soon would it be ruined as to why I'm going over this? Um, ah, it's going to be ruined pretty quickly, I think. Yeah, by that point, I'm going to completely ruin it. So, essentially, we're going over a Yiching Ho game, and if you know that uh, Yi Cheng Ho is a pretty strong Korean, then you probably know why he's a pretty strong Korean. If you know why he's a pretty strong Korean, then you probably know how his style has changed over the years. So, it's kind of interesting what happens to him in this game. That was suitably vague. Let's go over it. Alright, so we have a professional 6 Don opening up in the 4 4 corner. Nothing unusual is played for a change. Because you know me, and going over an orthodox opening. I just do it every single week. But no, we're seeing a little bit more orthodox today. We're going to have the large knights opening. Interesting in and of itself. Uh, typically see the small knight, a bit more territorial than the large knight that aims primarily for influence. Reason being, the corner, not secure yet. Still invadable. So if you're looking for secure territory, then this is probably not something that you want to play. Indeed. That is the joke. But alright. White approaches. White does not actually split. We don't really see very many splittings today because of all the different ways we can take advantage of it. Either old school, go here, throw in. Everyone knows the variations or even from here, and extend, which is also fairly nice. Instead we approach and see what white wants, to, or what black wants to do. Does black want to back off? Does black want to pincer? All of these are really, really okay moves. None of them are better than the others, but for this game, we do see black backing off, taking an enclosure. All right. White similarly has two choices. Am I going to go ahead and try and take the corner for myself? Am I going to back off as not to be pincered? Both of these, again, are completely fine. It's just a question of what variation do you want to do? If you're fine with this move, then you're saying I'm okay with either A, B, or C being played against me. If you don't like one of these, then maybe you shouldn't be playing it. Maybe you should be extending. And if you extend, then you're fine with saying, I'm going to be attacked here, and I know how to handle that. All of these are completely fine. Black, on the other hand, approaches. And we see with this next move a style of play that some people who maybe haven't been paying attention to Cheng Ho's style lately and how it's been changing. We're seeing a little bit more of an aggressive player because aggressive play has been proven to work very well against him. So we see the shoulder hit of all things. That seems kind of odd. What is this move doing? What are we trying to do here with the shoulder hits? What is, what is the deal with this? Why might why might White have played it? Any ideas? Splitting two groups. If we were going to actually split two groups, we would probably pincer rather than lean, because we don't know this is actually going to be split. Aiming at R17. White wants a wall for something, no clue. All right, so one thing that's kind of interesting here is all of the different things that uh, black can do as a follow-up. If, for example, we saw something like this, 
Well, one thing we might see is black going back and picking a variation, maybe even this one, in which we have to go into the corner, and influence is obtained. So if we back off, we can pretty well expect that this is a pretty good variation, especially in light of the fact that black has already said, I'm kind of interested in influence, but that's why I made the large knight. So if we see this with a reduction already in place at N16, then this is not really as useful. So that's interesting there. Another thing that we might see, we probably wouldn't see it, but maybe we might see um, some kind of development here. I didn't ruin the tree, did I? No, I didn't. We might see some kind of development here. And again, if there's already a group at uh, N16, then even playing high doesn't really make sense because there's no future expansion taking place here. It's just already being reduced. So that's interesting. That's a little bit interesting. Black decides to follow up. White backs off. And now it's that thing again. I mean, what are we going to do? Are we actually going to play this variation and have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five stones, five low stones on top of the board right away? No, we are not going to do that. That's crazy. That's uh, not very efficient for developing anything, you know, ever. So we're probably not going to do that. Might back off, but then again, we're still being reduced. So hard to say, hard to say. Black says, you know what? I'm going to play simple, and I'm going to simply Hane. This begins to take away some of the bite of the N16 stone. It's a problem. We can't really see a real good way to keep extending or developing in light of that stone's there. So frack it. We're just going to take care of that stone right now. So it's not a headache anymore. The reason why I picked this game is because of simple play, not unlike what we just saw here. Black's not getting any complicated. Like, okay, there's a stone there. He's not saying to himself, I'm going to like attach here, and I'm going to try and jump up and threaten your corner there, so you better protect, and then I'm going to just keep playing large moves all over the place. And swallow your stone. No. No, nothing unusual, just getting rid of the offending stone. Yes, but I said that it was large in a rather sarcastic manner. So that is okay. White gets nice base. Black gets nice sente. Time to decide what to do. Well, we have choices. We can continue our interesting idea of developing the top of the board, but then we have development only in one area and there's an open corner, so not sure why we really do that right now. We could extend, but that's not Sente, so don't really know why we would do that either. We could approach the corner, as has been suggested. So we can approach either on the outside for development or on the inside to continue to prevent white from actually, you know, uh, getting a nice easy development, any kind of framework on the left hand side without any Aji there. Well, black goes for the outside. White sides to go low again. And now we've got some development. Okay. I have an extension there. Next stone that black wants to get is over here. A little bit of a double wing kind of deal. Isn't double low stones kind of not good? If you want to develop a framework, then it's not good. Locally, they're both okay. It's just there's not going to be a large area on the left-hand side. I mean, the next move that white's going to play isn't going to be like, all right, time to play D10 and take all of the nothing for myself and definitely not going to play a lower stone. Could be, could be. 
So these are nicely played local. Uh, going for more of a territorial approach to whatever black is doing, we can see the territorial approach here. Getting a nice uh, solid base, both low enclosures, also speaks of territory. So what now? Well, nothing is really large on the board right now besides two areas. Something in here in which we get a wonderful attack placed on ourselves, and something over here in which we limit uh, black's ability to approach. And my monitor going black, what the frack? Okay, are, are, are you done screwing with me? Okay, I've got a lecture to do, so stop that. All right, so white takes uh, white takes uh, away black's potential extension. Is the stream black too? I hope not. Now I'm paranoid. All right, no, it's not. It was just a monitor, because I had this on my second monitor, which for some reason, with AMD video cards, there's been this thing for like the last, eh, let's say six or seven years, in which your secondary monitor, if you don't have a lot of uh, intensive programs running, it just doesn't get the power to it or something, and it just does stupid stuff. Kind of annoying. No fix for it as far as I'm aware. So that said, white approached. Now, black has options. Black can say, you have approached me too close. I am going to pincer you and attack your stone. And much pain will be had. Starts a little bit of a fight. And with a large knight, there is odd you to be had for this stone to get stronger. But you could do that. You could do that. It's a bit of a one-on-one -on -one battle there. Well, actually, no, it's not a bit of a one-on-one -on -one battle. Okay, yeah, if black were to actually uh, pincer this, 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 there we go, no, this group here would be okay. It's perfectly fine. However, the new pincered stone would be in trouble, white stone would be in trouble, and the area that black wants to develop would be at risk. So we have two worries for black, and only one for white. So black says, forget that, I'm just gonna protect myself. You worry about your thing, I'm gonna worry about my thing, and we're just gonna play a nice game of Go here. So all right, everyone's doing okay so far. Isn't 3 and 03 a wasted move now? Uh, no. It does look a little bit strange. Uh, let's see, how can I get a how can I make this a comparison? We always see follow-ups. We always see local follow-ups, right? Um, what am I thinking of? For example, All right, you know what? I've got nothing. Each everything is a completely different, very a different uh, situation. Suffice it to say, there's always little defensive moves there that we do see, and in light of the options, then it's not so good uh, to have actually attacked. If O3 was off the board, then this position would look a lot stranger than it does right now. If we were to be like, zoop, you're gone. Then the bottom area is still very much open to invasion at multiple different locations, right? And if we were to change that, I, I have absolutely no idea if the tree is dead. I suspect it might be. Rip in pieces. Uh, and if this was low, no, oh, it's dead. Oh well. And if this was low, same thing. Luckily, it's not. Yeah, you're right. It's dead. Boo-hoo. All right, so white fixes. Now it's black's turn. Must again decide what is uh, OK to play here. 
are we going to be able to play an attacking move? Is there anything to attack? Uh, no, not really. Is there an area that we can enlarge? Mm, yeah, yeah, there's, there's areas to enlarge. Are there things to invade? Uh, technically. But uh, for the moment, we're pretty much in a peaceful game so far. Nothing can really uh, sink our teeth into. So Black says, this game's taking a turn. I'm going to enlarge all the things. So you have to attack or reduce. So from here on, we're now expecting a bit more of an aggressive game. Because the question now becomes, is white able to do something exactly the same? Is there like a large area that white can just turn around and try and take for themselves? No, left hand side, we know that's not going to happen. We've already went over uh, the reason why that is. So we obviously have to reduce. Okay, if he wants all the nothing, then I totally recommend C10. C10 would be a great move to have all the nothing. Now that game would be horrifying. I mean, you'd have, like, what? Follow up with a shoulder hit at D13? And then get a wall there, and then hit the right side and get a wall there. Oh, that'd be ugly. That would be so ugly. I am not saying 10 again. But alright, how to reduce? How do we reduce the top? Gotta reduce, gotta reduce. Can't, can't keep up with black. Black's development's too fast. What do we do? Use the Aji! Okay, how? How do we use the Aji that is here? What are we going to do? Oh, 06! Cross cut and hope for the best. Alright. If you are hoping for the best for your opponent, you can arbitrarily choose a cross cut here. That would actually probably work out rather nicely for you. But if we were wanting the best for white, you know, what are we gonna, what are we gonna do? M16 or L16, I would say. All right, so everyone seems to be on the idea that we're going to use the Aji of the stone that we have played, either maybe a Hane here or an attachment there, or a cross cut there. Ooh, Moboy says, I know sector lines. Indeed. Sector lines are a very interesting thing. And if we find ourselves looking at those sector lines, we find ourselves with a very fascinating move. A move that's threatening to connect up and go in deeper and can't be surrounded. A sector line is when you can see things that aren't actually there. You look at the edge of your opponent's stones, and you draw an imaginary line in your head between those two stones, and you don't go beyond it. Why? Because if you do, you get surrounded. But all right, so here we are. We see this interesting idea. We're not too deep, because sector lines have told us that we're fine, we can't be surrounded. We're threatening to link up uh, our stone because we can envision one move ahead because we're all pro. And uh, we can even go deeper if he passes. So, okay, this should be a pretty good move. Pretty good move. But we ask ourselves interesting questions when we see invasions. Anytime we see an invasion. What's its game plan? How is it going to live? Where is it going to go? Those are the questions that we ask ourselves. So where can it go? It can go either to one or to two. In general, not, not the specific stone. But you know, in general, it can go to the right or the left. Because it can't live locally. So right, left, or living in the middle. So black begins some rather simple play. It's like, well, I see Aji here. If you don't, if you want me to cut through you, you're boned. You better respond to me. So, okay. Yep, Q10, exactly. Wait, no, yes. So, all right. Responds. And Black says, I see Aji here. It's kind of like that movie, The Sixth Sense, only with ghost stones. 
Now white obviously has to respond. Ooh, no, don't take the elephant eye. If you take the elephant's eye, a curse will be placed upon you, and this game will be over before it begins. Reason being is you're working against your F15 stone. And if you strengthen that stone, you're killing off your K15 stone. So do not take the elephant eye. It can be cursed. So white backs off. Tries to play nice and strong. This one's actually sente because white doesn't want to be surrounded. So we know we can get two moves out of there. OK, cool. So we've got a wall on the left. We're trying to get a wall on the right. Where do we go? How do we, get, how do we finish this wall? How do we do it? You must build a wall or your computer explodes. You have 10 seconds. Whoa. Look at the 12 cues with the knowledge. Good job, Drake. Let's see, Drake got it, uh, Taz got it, and Moboy got it. K13, what is K13? I sense a troll. Ah, you want to cap it immediately. Okay. Uh, no, we're still going for forcing moves. And in this land of forcing moves, we can threaten to cut things apart. White says, no cut apart. Then black says, I'm going to connect. Now what are you going to do? We have now completely put that nice, lovely little invasion. It was benign. It was just offering us third line territory. Just wanted to reduce us a little bit. Nothing too deep, nothing too deep. Just wanted us to take a little bit of territory for ourselves in exchange for some shape in the center. And now it's being completely swallowed by a big bad monster. So that's a problem. We now kind of sort of have to live here. very brave of white. Not only not only is the stone being swallowed, it was just swallowed in sente. It's like, you know, I could aid my stone right now, but then I'd lose out of some points on the right hand side as I'm forced to connect up my stones. I would rather not do that. I'm going to save my right hand side. I have nice third line territory there. Now try and kill me. Now the reasoning behind this is actually quite straightforward. It is almost impossible to kill a weak group when that group knows it's in trouble. Really really hard to do. This as is has zero chance of dying. If a group knows it's in trouble, you should not be able to kill it most of the time. It's only when we get into other things that that groups start dying. Like maybe there's two weak groups, and that's a problem. Or maybe there's um, what is it? Uh, word, an area that you want to develop while trying to, you know, live, and you have to juggle trying to develop an area and trouble and living, and invariably you play one move where it shouldn't, and congratulations, you just died or you just got everything reduced. That that's uh when things start actually dying. So right now, no. Right now we're okay. Right now we're okay. So black plays locally. White's going for as many force moves as possible. Now doesn't that look passive? Oh, sorry, I'm ignoring someone. Can't white play P11? I have no idea what P11 is. Uh, yes, white can play p11 and will resign shortly thereafter. Because we're not interested in breaking into the center. We're interested in k15 not dropping dead at our feet. And if we do things like try to break in through here, black's just going to back off and get stronger. It's like, I'm winning! I'm killing all of your stones! Yes, you are. So we don't really want to do that. 
Let's see. Now, this is where you would think that the average player has obviously turned into a territorial game, right? I've been reduced. I see like five stones in the center of what I was developing. Time to keep reducing. Maybe, uh, maybe go into a corner. Maybe play another move down here and pick up some territory. Moboy says nope. Jack <laughs> doesn't give a stone. Indeed, indeed. Black, on the other hand, says, you know what I need here? I'm pretty certain the problem is I don't have enough influence. I need to get me some more of that. When at first you don't influence, influence, influence again. So once again, behind enemy lines, sector line, if we all trip out enough, we can all see lines on the board. And we now know that our opponent is behind this line, so we can theoretically attack it. So all right, it's it's there exactly, Moboy, the second part that I was about to get into. This is actually, if we don't respond to this, every this group is gonna live. But can you imagine right now a cap? That would be enormous. So okay, White says, I, I think it's time to fight this. Black doesn't care. Black's like, you can Atari through me. I'm just gonna take the seventh line down here if it's good for you. White comes in. And you can see the instant shift. It's like, yeah, come on in, come on in, come on in. Just co connect to that group. I'm developing the bottom now. This is no longer about the top, it's about the bottom. This guy really knows how to make a framework into something. I mean, now he's up onto the ninth line. I mean, this is crazy. You just like trying to take ninth line territory against Li Cheng Ho. It's not often that you see something like that. What happened is so ten moves ago. Very true. Very true. So all right. Uh, we can't just drop what we're doing and try and reduce the bottom because then we'd have multiple weak groups. We're still not connected. I mean, that's an Atari that we have that's going to disconnect us again. We don't have enough shape yet. Li Cheng Ho doesn't have a chance to do anything about the bottom anymore. He's got to still do stuff down here. So, all right. Try and do it in Sente. It looks like there's an eye shape being formed there. Uh, this one, I, I don't know. I think that's just endgame. He knows he's not going to be able to do any kind of invasion. I don't know. I. That's the problem with not seeing these uh, games played out uh, live. I, I really have no idea what the time was. It seems a bit unusual, though. It might have been time Suji. It could be. It could be. <laughs> Paper Bird knows his old style, exactly. Uh, Yishingo was very famous for just letting you take whatever you wanted and still winning the game. Usually an end game. But alright. Time to decide what to do. Lee goes for a reduction, and maybe a bit of an expansion. We can kind of picture something here. We can picture a little something something down there uh, being developed. So, now that we're being reduced again, it's time to just take what we need, right? We're just going to develop this and be happy. We fought 
Yi Cheng Ho. We got some profit off of him. So time to live and let live, right? What do you think? Good idea? I do, so that can't be right. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. I mean, yeah, yeah. Let's see, did anyone? Okay, no. Okay, so here, Black has a slightly different idea, a slightly different idea. And that's to try to keep swallowing and cutting off everything that Li Cheng Ho plays to further grow all of the things. So, okay, we're leaning on the corner. The, we're probably not going to invade the corner, so that's okay to do. We're going to get strong for the center, because apparently we have serious tunnel vision and we want the center. That is where all of, that's where everything lies, just in the middle. Okay. Going to cut through, apparently. Oh, for... F mm. No, we're not. Sorry. I forgot. We're going to attach here first. Two deaths in the tree. We're making progress. Threatens to continue to come forward. And then cut through. So it would appear that Li Cheng Ho's idea so far is to begin making a smiley face in the center of the Moyo. Which, to be fair, I think would be really, really cool. Now, if we block at F4, that leaves cut points behind. That could be an issue. So, Black says no cut points behind. If you want to Hane through F5, that's great. It's only going to hurt you in the center. Getting some moves in. Nice large corner. But that was Gote. That one really confused me. That would that 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 move confused me the most. Cause it's I mean, I'm not I'm not a very good player, but I can kind of see that the middle is getting a little bit in trouble. I mean whites don't, don't have any shape to them yet. But, d -d 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 are, are these really going to be okay? I mean, I guess there's, it's a little hard to attack them because of moves like this. I mean, that's just going to force a connection and, I, I don't know, maybe we can still come out and be fine? He's ob Yeah, he's obviously confident they're right okay. But Black says, you know what I can do? I can count to two. There's a group on the bottom that's in trouble. And there's a group on trop, uh, on trop? Yes. There's a group on trop that's in trouble. So now what? Well, white has to defend two places at once. This is non-negotiable. Both groups have to survive. Black simply defends himself repeatedly. Nothing too complicated from Black so far. I mean, his ideas are kind of crazy, but nothing too complicated from Black so far. He's strengthening his uh, stones, so his attack actually uh, has some strength behind it. He's constantly trying to play the surrounding game, because I guess when he first learned how to play Go, he was told this is a surrounding game, and he really took that lesson to heart. So now we're seeing if it works against Li Cheng Ho. All right, so we're making shape. We can kind of see shape going on here. Black says, I'm going to cut you. Oh, 
once again behind enemy lines. Have to escape. Getting cut off. Need to keep that escaping going on. But white connects, so now there's time to try to uh, surround again. Time to escape. Black comes on in. White threatens to cut through, but wouldn't you know it, there's ways to defend it. Now here's something that's also kind of interesting. Rather than just back off here, white plays a one point jump in order to try to fix his shape. Now, if I asked you what the next sequence is going to be, I doubt anyone would see it. But can anyone see what happens with C12? Can anyone see what happens here? Because this is just awesome. All right, Jamel, what is it? What are you going to play? Uh, C10, close, but not quite. Uh, Drake is close. The the cross cut is vital. Yeah. White plays the Atari, and so does Black. We now have problems. So we have to not die here. White seems to think he's fine because he invited this. So he cuts through. Now we have a fight going on as we attempt to not get killed and connect up everything. However, only problem with this situation is it's really calling into question all of White's uh, connections, such as the one that we see here, and here, and here. That's for free. That's for free. That's for free. Nothing. It's not it's not too bad just yet. It's not too bad just yet. Does connect up one stone, but you know, it's not too bad. We just back off here. We get to connect. Unfortunately, that connection means we get to cut. And kill off white stones. Now, on top of this, you still have to remember that there's a more Aji to be had. There's this wedge. The wedge kind of sort of revolt, results in a code, but if you want to play it, you have the option of doing so. So there's still Aji to be had here. Oh, if the audio on KGS is at all wonky, it's probably because of your internet connection. Ain't it co on bottom? Um, honey down and 
and Yeah, if I'm on helium, then it's definitely your connection. Sorry. It's not about me. Promise. So, what we're going to do now is try to defend. Because, like I said, there's a lot of Aji still here. Not only are there a lot of Aji still here, this isn't completely alive just yet. So white's going to go after the weak group rather than worrying about the stones on the bottom and their status. Pushes through. Great, we're cutting it off. This is good. This is good. Black tries to go for safety. Now it's white's turn to look for Aji. gets a response and suddenly I feel like I've missed a move no I haven't there we go cuts off black now the grand question is this group gonna die if so then congratulations white has read everything brilliantly Obviously we're going to cut, have to extend, can't let this stone die. Looks like we're officially in a capture race. So first thing we're going to do is increase liberties. So time to increase liberties by taking advantage of our opponent's bad shape. That's a threat to a kill. We get to respond. We get to push out because only two liberties available. White tries to cut that off. New goal, kill off the three stones. But uh, is that really going to be enough? Is that really going to be enough? Can we, can we still kill that somehow? White connects, trying to save himself black follows looks like we're going to be run to our group so we're going to be okay responds goes for yield forcing moves gets rid of a few liberties Now here's where things get really, really interesting. Because sure, white managed to connect up one group, but what about this one that's almost cut off? So this one connects up. But now that one's cut apart. tries to escape, but there's a double Atari from the beginning of the game. Or from the middle of the game, rather. And there's no getting through that one. So White resigns. No choice but to resign. Because White Stones are dead. From a very, very aggressive strategy, it was indeed a rather bold one. Attached to all of the things, keeps surrounding every single group that's played on the board. And see where that takes you. But he did have some pretty good reading. He did have some pretty good reading. So I hope you guys liked this game. I certainly thought it was very, very interesting. I had a, t I had a bit of a tough time uh, picking the game this week because uh, there's a lot of games going on 
and there were plenty of options for me to choose from. I mean, there was, let's see, what was it? Um, the uh, LG, for example. Not sure if we wanted to pick one of those games, but we had a lot of them there, including uh, some Mies at all. I had one of his games, very, very aggressive game that I wanted to play. He played had some not quite as interesting as this game, in my opinion, but very, very cool, nonetheless. Games that capture everything, of course. Um, let's see, what else did we have? I don't know, I'll probably do a picks again this week to highlight some of the more interesting ones. I can't go over all of them uh, today. So, I hope you enjoyed this game. I do have 10 minutes, but unfortunately the other alternative games that I have would take way longer than 10 minutes. We're talking another 30 to 40. And I cannot do that tonight, unfortunately. I have things to do. I will go ahead and say, though, that there is a game, not a game, there's a series that I've been doing. For those of you who have failed to follow me on Twitch, you, not Twitch, uh, Twitter, you don't know, but I do have a Go series that I've been recording behind your backs. You have no idea on what server I'm playing this new series on. Suffice it to say, I'm waiting until I'm a little bit more done with the series before I upload it. Suffice it to say, I hope you guys have enjoyed this lecture. I don't have time for a simul. It does last a long time. But yes, there's more Go videos coming. Hope you enjoyed the lecture. I will see you guys next time.